nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Lines in. End of round. Congratulations. You are the champion. I'm going to wait a minute. I'm not going to get excited yet. I've seen this on TV too many times. I'm parched. It's official. It's official? It's official? <laughs> There's no way. All right, we're here in Sturgeon Bay, wrapping up the Tackle Warehouse title presented by Toyota. The first one ever, and we have our first time champ, Rusty Seleski. Congrats, dude. Thank you. It's, Appreciate uh, it. I mean, you crushed small mouse this week. You fished for four days, so we're, you know, doing day five. Yep. Uh, but six days of competition, totally different format than we saw on the pro circuit. And uh, you crushed it. You crushed it. It worked out. <laughs> well, uh, I think instead of making small talk here, we splash this bad boy in the water, go out, snag a few small mouse, shoot the breeze a little, have us a good time. What do you think? Perfect. That'd be great. Let's Looking roll. forward to it. Rusty, we're here, Riley's Bay. This is where you did all your damage this week. Um, there's a hundred boat tournament going on, so there's a lot of other folks out. Plus, it's a Sunday, you know, so there's just people out enjoying the resource. But uh, we got drop shots. We got smallmouth swimming around yeah. here. What? Uh, just tell me a little bit about what we're fishing. Okay, so this is where I actually ended the day yesterday. Um, my primary area is where you see those four boats lined up. It's just a big, long point. And you can catch them from eight foot, actually six foot deep, all the way out to 22, 23 feet. You just gotta look for them. But I came over here with about maybe 30 minutes left and caught two. And uh, this is just a spot that I thought was just for keepers, but I ended up catching a, the two I caught. One was almost three, and the other one was almost five. So I mean, it let me win the tournament. It did, yeah, that 414, I think is what, uh, what it weighed, came in very clutch. <laughs> oh, unbelievable. That was like the most action. Score tracker was kind of dead for a while yeah, too. And then all of a sudden was it was like, Rusty just caught a 414. I was like, oh man, <laughs> this is getting intense. Fifteen minutes. Four pounds, 14 ounces. Look like a five pounder. You know, it's a different format this week, Rusty. Uh, you know, the catchway release and knowing what your competitors have. Yes. What was it like catching that big one, that 414, uh, and knowing then that you took the lead? So the crazy part was I, my math, wasn't too good because I really didn't think that was going to put me in the lead. I, I, I really thought I needed about six pounds. So I knew that got me close to where I just needed a two pounder or any kind of, any kind of keeper. Oh, got, perch. I got a perch. Nice. So um, I was shocked as anyone when Butch, my boat official, told me, you just, you're now in the lead. Put, the, put you in the lead by eight ounces. That's nice. Let's go get one more. Oh my God. Say what? <laughs> yeah, but then you really focus on, I'm like, okay, don't, you know, you can't stop. You got whatever, I had like seven, eight minutes left. I'm like, catch another one, just catch another one. Don't worry about it. Well, and it's eight ounces too, right? Yeah. I feel like a lot of the leads this week, or, you know, whether you were hovering around cut line or anything like that, it was at least like one good fish, like yes. a four pounder or five pounds, something like that. Eight ounces, that's just a keeper. Yep. You know, that's a two pounder. Yep. Which... Yeah, we got, uh, we, we got it tight. Actually, for a while it was tight earlier in the day, and then mm -hmm. um, Beavers kind of yeah, ran Bradford away. Yeah, Bradford kind of kept yep. getting on them pretty good. Yep, he kind of ran away from everyone. I think I was down like eight pounds for a long time, and then I'd catch one, and 
get back to maybe five pounds out and then he'd catch another one, you know, just back and forth. And then right at the end, catching those two, because it was, I think it was about a seven and a half pound deficit, mm -hmm. almost eight. And then I, I caught like a three and, a, and almost five and whammo. Well, tell me about how you found this area. Okay. You, know, so, you only had two days of practice. Yeah, you only have two days. So um, my first day I went up and launched in a state park by uh, Horseshoe Island, it's called, I believe. Mm -hmm. And I fished around there and I fished all the way up to Sisters Islands. And I actually had a pretty good day around Sisters. I, I thought um, that's probably where I was going to start the tournament. And then I came here and I got fewer bites. Like, I think I only got six bites throughout that day, but they were um, all nice ones, all like four pounders. So I'm like, man, those are the ones I've got to figure yeah. out. And, and with two days of practice, you just, to me, I was just looking for an area that had fish in it. So I got bit coming out of a little sturgeon on both sides. I got bit on that point and I got on this, I thought I had one. On this point, I, I got my most bites. I got three bites on there. And one of them I saw, the last, I, the first two I didn't catch and the last one I dropped on them right underneath the trolling motor in like 15 feet and caught a four pounder. And I was like, Oof. And then I just got on the trolling motor and went down alongside the point and I marked like three more. Oh, okay. So like, th there's some fish around here, you know. Real little guy. But I can't tell you how many times I catch a little one and the next cast catch a four pounder. So many times. Oh, I don't have to worry about it today. I can just lift them up any way I want. No rules, man. Yeah. It was it's kind of a trip having to be careful of these things all the time. You know? Little guy. So the key was don't like when you fire it out, give it a lot of like just let it lay there on slack line and try to count to about 30 in your head before you ever move it. Then lift it up and I would just like pop, maybe move it six inches and another six inches and reel it in. Okay. Believe it or not. We're going to power fish a drop shot. Yeah. Yes. It was more about kind of covering water till you found them. Now, once I found them, I would use the same, same technique, but I, I would, uh, you know, spot lock and then kind of fan cast. And I'd catch one, you know, and then I'd make several casts there and then I'd fan cast and catch one. Okay. But it's like you were saying earlier, your theory is when that drop shot goes down there, that small mouth, if he's near it, he wants to eat it. Yep. He's just and either he's not there or he's just not going to eat. And at that point, half my bites, like right now, I'm just looking at my slack. I'm trying to wait for like a, close to a minute, but half my bites, I'm just staring at my slack and all of a sudden my line just starts going, oh. you know, like they have to follow it down. I, I'm assuming or they're close by and they watch it hit mm -hmm. the bottom. I, I try to swim when the goby, if you let the goby suck on it, he'll swim you into a rock. So once you feel that goby, kind of slowly swim it off the hill. Oh, and then? And he'll chase it. Let's go get it. Or, or pop it, I don't care, I got a million weights. I just got 200 grand, I'll buy more. <laughs> I mean, I didn't want to say it. <laughs> yeah, I did. There we go, I got it. Okay, yeah, a lot of times you can get them. If you're patient. Goby Central, huh? Dude, it is. But you know, you're talking about the Yamamoto Shad Shape Worm. Yes. Uh, the Maxent, Berkeley Powerbait Maxent Flat Worm. Uh, just give me a little rundown though on like the gear you use. What size leader, um, you know, length rod, stuff like that for these drop shots. So, 7.4 um, was my favorite length for the spinning rod. Just seemed to handle the fish the best and castability was the best. Uh, I really liked a 3 sixteenths ounce weight. I seem to be able to uh, cast far enough and stay out of the rocks a little better. Sure. But as the uh, last couple of days were pretty windy, so I, I got all the way up to a 3 three eighths at times. And then uh, leader length, I thought mattered in the beginning. I was trying to keep it around a foot. But time is your enemy in these tournaments, so I was getting uh, where I was just, I'd break off a weight, I'd just tie another knot, and a couple times I'd, I'd catch one and I'd end up with a leader about that long. <laughs> and then you realize it doesn't matter. It only matters to us, it doesn't matter to the fish. Uh, let's see, seven pound was my go-to leader size. For your floor car? Yes, I, um, 12 pound main line, seven pound. It was heavy enough. 
I mean, I, I, some of the guys I talked to were, were using eight. Some of the guys are using six. They were biting seven, and, and on a spinning rod, to me, seven, seven pounds heavy. It's like rope. So I was comfortable throwing that heavy line. There aren't a lot of people that would call seven pound test rope. No, <laughs> well, from the West Coast, I mean, we, I, I remember the days when we'd throw four pound a lot. And you just, when you get a bite, you just go chase them around like tuna. Dude, I've caught some really big fish on two pound test ice fishing. I guarantee you. There he is. And I'm gonna throw, are you right towards that boat? Yep, right off the left side. Okay. And it's doing what small mouths do. Oh, I'm yeah. talking about jumping. <laughs> That's rad. Make sure you loosen it up a little when you get them I close. Ba I backed her down you a already little did. already. After we cleared that jump like you were talking about? Yeah, yeah. How do you, how do you bite it? Dude, it, it almost felt like, a goby? you know when those gobies pull you into the rocks? And it's just real light. Uh, I got one little tap. Oh, my knot's all... Yeah, and then I just started reeling and I was like, oh, hey! I'll buy some time so you can go on ahead and catch you one. I know, I thought I'd get it as soon as it hit the water, but it must be pretty spread out today. Okay, okay, small mouth. I gotta watch this. Oh yeah, those are the kind you need. Oh God, I should've reeled up more. You got him, nice. Like a pro. Beauty, yeah, you made me look stupid. <laughs> Yeah, dude. I mean, it's like almost every smallmouth that we saw caught this week, you know, they're to a lot of people that PBs, you know, like these, that's probably like a, I don't know, three something. Not that bad. But they're healthy. Oh, yeah. Well, that's definitely an over three. I've seen enough this week. I got pretty <laughs> good at judging. Yeah. Slide her back in, I suppose. All right, Rusty, you explained to me a little bit ago, but tell me about, you know, we're on this little point. Yes. And this, this here is kind of, this is the juice. This is where you did the large majority of your damage and a lot of the work on day three, your third day of fishing, day five. Yes. Uh, but to make it to the championship round. Yep. Yep, you're right. And it's just like a little, is it like a little rock ridge or what, what exactly is the, uh, the makeup of this spot? So it's a point that comes off that island. It's just an extension of the island, but it's a real long point. It, I don't know, how far, are we 300 yards off? Yeah, probably. And, it, and there's another 100 yards of it going that way. So it's a big, long point. It goes, uh, the deepest I caught one out here was about 21, probably. Boat sitting in 25. And the shallowest was six feet. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's the crazy part. In the mornings, they were generally a little shallower. Almost every morning, I do most of my damage up around that point, uh, the point you can see on the mm -hmm. island. Uh, one day they'd be on that side, next day they'd be on this side, but just somewhere up there. And um, the rest of the time, I just really had to hunt around. I would uh, generally start way out at the end and go that way. And then I think day three, I finally got smart enough to realize you start out there and you don't get a bite to get up there. <laughs> so I started a little closer and I caught them sooner. Um, and that's it, man. You just had to, sometimes, it's a big wide point too. Like the other side of it is a good hundred yards over there. So, you know, it's a lot of fishing. You have yeah. To, I would move, move around quite a bit until I got a bite. Once I got a bite, spot lock and try to make the most of that little area that I was in. But you said like, if you caught them on the front side of the point, you'd catch them on the front side, a good whether point. you were yep. up shallow or deep you, and vice versa. Yeah. Good point side. for any given day. If they were on that side of the point, that was the theme for the day. They would be on that side of the point. I'd never catch any on this side. And then the next day, they might be on this side of the point, and the theme would hold out throughout the day. You think it was probably just a current thing Had or to be. Yeah, I'm just not smart enough to really figure it out, <laughs> honestly. But if I had to guess, they would, they wanted to be where the current, on, on the uh, side of the point where the current was coming from. Okay, like they yeah. Weren't so, I mean, necessarily, that... They were in front. They weren't using the point as a break. You know what I mean? There's maybe not enough current where there was, they were out in front of it. Sure. And small must like current, you know, as long yeah. as it's not, Super, super heavy. Yep. They're all about swimming around and doing that stuff. Of course. Yeah, and there's, you know, I think there's pods of uh, five to 30 swimming around. 
and you can, you can definitely get them going. Rusty, it's not like we've caught a pile of fish today, but we definitely, uh, you know, we did what you did in the tournament. We hunted around, we pecked, plucked a few here and there. Uh, we each know. caught one nice one though, you know? Yeah. John Canada was out here wearing a mouth yeah, earlier. Yeah. So, he stole uh, our thunder. He sent, he, yeah, he sent, sent me a text, let me know that uh, there are fish still on your spot. <laughs> uh, but man, I, I gotta say, I think, uh, you know, it's gorgeous weather here. Uh, at some point, you're gonna start working your way back home to California. Uh, but I think, I think we've done all we need to do here on this day five. I, I, I had an absolute blast. Uh, I love seeing how you gotta catch your fish this week. I never actually had a chance to watch you on the water. That was kind of the weird thing about this format. We were so spread out right. throughout the course of the week. But yeah. uh, man, it, it was awesome. And I think really, you know, for uh, yourself, I, I couldn't have, you know, asked for a better champion to win that first ever Tackle Warehouse title. Appreciate and, that. uh, dude, it was heck of a job, man. Heck of a job. Thank you. Kyle. Maybe, maybe we catch one more, but then we put it on the trailer. You got it. <laughs> you got it.